G'day there guys, not emotionally mature enough to take compliments or express his emotions here, it's your main man Marky and welcome back to another episode of r slash am I the asshole. Now if you love today's bloody good content, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie and get ready for some good stories. Let's go. Am I the asshole for asking my wife to quit her job after her boss tried to kiss her? So I'm 24 and my wife is 25. She's my high school sweetheart, we've been together since we were 18 and went through uni together. We married last year, and overall everything is going really well. This year she started a job in a fashion store. It's her first job ever, and she really enjoys it there. So she frequently goes to after work dinners and drinks with her co-workers, most of which are male. I'm fine with that of course, as I fully trust her, and know she would never want to cheat on me. Also, she always tells me everything and doesn't leave out details. I know all of her co-workers, including her boss, and I've met them a few times before. So the other day, she tells me that after one of those evenings out with her co-workers, she was walking with her boss back to the store to pick something up at around 4am, and he tried to kiss her. She of course pulled away right away, and I believe her, and she went home to tell me straight away. Of course, I am freaking out. I don't like this one bit, her boss knows me and he knows we are married. So the next morning I gathered my thoughts and told her straight up that I would like her to quit her job. I don't feel comfortable with her working there anymore. She says I'm overreacting. She would never do anything with him and she loves her job and enjoys getting paid of course. She's not even considering looking for something else. She really wants to stay there but I feel super uncomfortable. She says she wouldn't go for drinks alone with her boss anymore, but honestly, that's not enough for me. Am I the asshole for asking her to quit her job? Now in the comments, Accordland says, You're the asshole. Her boss should be punished, not her. But it isn't normal for people to be out with their boss until 4am either. This sounds off. I agree, this is off, and it's weird that she isn't interested in leaving her job after this. I don't think her not wanting to leave her job is weird. If it were my wife, I'd be fighting for her boss to leave his job, and I believe my wife would want the same thing. But going out until 4am, alone, a surprise kiss with no reasoning behind it? Something is off. Now, maybe it's just that they work a later shift and don't get off work until 3am, but it's something. Look, I don't think a surprise kiss is very out of the blue. Creeps have to start somewhere. I'll clarify, in no way am I victim blaming anyone. My comment meant that creeps can be creeps regardless of any noted behavior in the past. They can victimize women at any point at all, be it 4am or 4pm. As someone who has had a longtime friend of my dad's who has known me since I was a literal child, up and try to make out with me out of nowhere when I was in my mid-twenties, let me assure you that yes, sometimes it comes out of frickin' nowhere from someone you never thought would be a threat. Mountain Goat 05 says, you're the asshole. You don't get to dictate whether or not she quits her job. You can tell her you're worried about her safety or encourage her to report her boss to HR or explore other job options, but you don't get to tell her that you want her to quit. Ideally, you're correct, but I note that not every job has HR. If this is a small one-boss business, she may not have a practical recourse. And Webby Vanderquack says, you're the asshole. I mean, the boss sucks, but in the conflict between you and your wife, you're the asshole. This is 100% her call. If she doesn't feel comfortable, she can make the choice to leave, but it sounds like she's handling the situation just fine. Quote, she said she wouldn't go for drinks alone with her boss anymore, but honestly, that's not enough for me. It sounds like you're afraid your wife will cheat on you. That's your issue to fix, not hers. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who goes for drinks with their boss alone until 4am in the morning? 25 year olds? Especially when it's an evening out with her co-workers and not just the boss. And rest in peace later says, you're the asshole. There was a situation, she handled it correctly, and you're trying to punish her for it. This is how you make sure she doesn't tell you in the future by being this controlling and unreasonable. She's out partying and drinking all the time with friends and staying out all night. 
Would you call a woman controlling and unreasonable if she started to get a little insecure at her husband doing that, going out drinking with his friends that he kept separate from her, and not coming home until the morning? It seems like if OP was a woman, there would be more I don't think he values you comments. Here though, OP is a guy, so the consensus seems to be don't be so insecure, let your wife stay out drinking all night if she wants to. Well said. It's mind-boggling that people are calling him insecure and paranoid when apparently staying out till 4 in the morning is a regular occurrence for her. And Leather Anybody 5389 says not the asshole. You want to be in protective mode, but you need to be in supportive mode. Your wife shared what happened, and that goes to show she trusts you to have her back and to be a firm support to her. You say you trust her, so trust her to make the right decision and continue to let you know what's happening. Instead of quitting, you can both sit and develop a specific plan of action if her boss tries again or does something else. And OP replies, Thanks man, it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. I'm really all over the place at the moment. And our next post is by user Key Illustrator 2899 titled, Am I the asshole for admitting to my half-sibling that I don't love them enough? So I, 33 female, have three older siblings, 37 male, 35 female, and 35 male, and a half-sister Laura, 24 female. My dad cheated on my mum, and that's how Laura came to be. My mum was understandably hurt when she found out about the cheating, and was willing to forgive my dad and stay married, until she found out about Laura. After a DNA test proved paternity, my mum filed for divorce, and we were all upset about the destruction of our family. In spite of everything, our mum still encouraged us to have a relationship with our dad, but we resented him and hated whenever he tried to get us to interact with Laura. Our parents didn't tell us, but my oldest brother knew that if Laura didn't exist, our family unit would have stood a chance. After each of us turned 14, we told our mum that we didn't want to spend the night at our dad's place, and that we would not be with him if he ever brought Laura around. Dad had custody of Laura, so it was rare, and whenever he or his side of the family complained, we promptly reminded everyone that we were all here because of his actions, and we had no obligation to Laura. We were all like this for so long, and I guess over the years, I started to soften up because when Laura reached out, I responded after a few days, and we slowly started a relationship. She reached out to our others as well, but they all politely refused, stating that while they're not angry at her anymore and wish her no ill will, they had no interest. They even said that they would not hold it against me if I wanted to have a relationship with Laura and be cordial at any events I invited her to, and true to their word, they were very civil when I invited Laura to my wedding. Laura is now engaged and wants me to attend, and I was willing, until I learned about her mother being present. I still despise this woman and politely refused the invitation, but Laura said that she was willing to look into changing dates that would suit me best if I gave her enough of a heads up. I knew that no matter what I said, Laura really wanted me there, and would keep trying, so I just told her the truth. I said I still hated her mum and didn't want to see her, so I just wasn't going. Laura was understandably upset, and my dad berated me for trying to make her choose between me and her own mother. I counted that I was never giving an ultimatum and simply just removing myself because of course the mother of the bride has higher importance. My dad said that if I ever loved Laura, I would attend regardless of who else was there. I said that while I was able to develop some type of love of Laura, I don't love her enough to tolerate her mother. Members of my paternal side are calling me an asshole, but I feel I was just being honest. Am I the asshole? And to edit to add because I keep seeing this, I just wanted to clarify. 1. Technically we, my mum and siblings, don't know if Laura's mum knew, but she never denied knowing. And I think if someone in her position was truly innocent, she'd be quick to voice it. Although after all this time, if she finally did come out and say it, I wouldn't believe her without proof. 2. Yes, my siblings and I were hurt, angry, and bitter children at the time. We were upset with Laura because if she didn't exist, our family would have still been together. We've grown up now and have stopped being angry, I mentioned that up above, but that doesn't equate to wanting a relationship. 
I'm willing to have one while my other siblings aren't because they don't feel close to her, nor do they want to become close. And that's their choice. Three, my brother was told that our mum would have stayed married to our dad if Laura didn't exist by our cousins, who were told by their mum, our maternal aunt, who my mum confessed to during the divorce. Four, over the years I have spoken to my mum in length about Laura, and while she bears no grudge against her, but never did, she wasn't ever going to force a relationship. She even encouraged it in the beginning, but just didn't push. Five, I don't know where people are getting that I've completely forgiven my dad, but I don't. However, if I did, that would be because he's my dad. Laura's mum is nothing to me, and I gain nothing from forgiving her. And six, I never told Laura that I didn't love her enough to tolerate her mum at the wedding. I told my dad that if he tells her, that's on him. I would never say something like that to her face because no matter how truthful, it's still hurtful. Maybe one day I can love her enough to tolerate her mum at something, but it won't be in time for the wedding. I have nothing much else to add. That's a lot, and I feel like you've backed yourself up enough that I'm on your side for this one, OP. It really comes down to personal preference. Yes, Laura is going to be upset that you don't want to be at that wedding, but if this is a deal breaker, it shouldn't be pushed. You shouldn't be expected to suck it up if you don't want to. I mean, it's okay to have your distance from the woman who split your family apart. I don't blame you for being hurt, and I support your decision here. Not the asshole. Now in the comments, Aphrodora says, Not the asshole, but poor Laura. I do encourage you to reconsider the wedding because chances are, you'll not have to interact with her mum. Your dad and the affair partner were assholes, but it has been 24 years. I think it's unfair of you all to believe that if not for Laura's existence, the circumstances of which she has no say in, that your parents would have stayed together. I get believing that as kids, but now as an adult, has it never occurred to any of you that adultery is rarely an isolated problem? If your parents had tried to work it out again, there's no guarantees it would have stuck. Laura has just been the scapegoat. It sounds like the OP and their siblings don't think that it was guaranteed that their parents would stay together, only that there was a chance. Laura was the deal breaker for the OP's mother. Even if the odds of the OP's parents staying together after his affair, if that affair had not resulted in a child, was slim, I can understand why the OP and their siblings would regret and resent the loss of that chance. It's unfortunate that the OP's older brother became aware that the existence of a child of their father's affair was the reason their mother chose to divorce him, when she would otherwise have forgiven him and given him another chance. And Ninja Dragon 94 says, Everyone sucks here. I feel like everyone is really rude here because Laura didn't ask for any of this. So far, what I'm seeing is Laura is the only decent person here. The only person that everyone should be angry at is the father. They didn't ask for any of it either. Why is it the offspring of the affair always gets off scot-free, but the ones who were directly affected, suffered, was filled with abandonment, hate, anger, and resentment, always get vilified? OP is within their right to not want to see the AP. The affair partner did something wrong too. Having an affair. Um, because they didn't do anything wrong? Am I missing something here? Yeah, but neither did the kids. You were missing empathy on another set of innocent kids who were also directly hurt during this. Eh, empathy enough to understand they felt sad about a divorce, although emotionally traumatized, is going at it a bit far. Plenty of kids go through tough divorces. Empathy enough that in their 30s they still feel this way? that they treated their half-sister, who did nothing wrong, like she was the cause of the divorce. No. Empathy goes away when you start hating on a literal baby for being born. They don't even hate their dad by all accounts. He gets a pass from them. Just, the baby didn't. While it might be understandable for the kids, it is something I'd expect them to grow out of, and or for a family to get therapy about. Sad is such an understatement. They're not treating Laura like crap. They are civil. Those are two different things. As per this sub, no empathy for the emotionally traumatized kids who have grown out of their anger, matured, understand their sister wants a relationship with Laura, and support it, and is civil with Laura at events. And why are we making up that their dad got a pass? OP said after the divorce they all resented him and stopped staying the night with him as soon as they legally could make that decision. 
Nothing in the post mentioned if they have a relationship with him now. They were civil to Laura at OP's wedding, but are uninterested in a relationship with her. Which is fine. Our next post is by user willinggear6147, titled, Am I the asshole for refusing to service my tenant's furnace unless they get rid of their dog? So I'm an individual who rents out my spare home. I'm not a business, it's just something I do to supplement my income. Officially, I don't allow dogs, but my tenants didn't bother to abide by it and my hands are tied. I can't force them to get rid of the dog because a tenant has rights, and despite this friction, I like to think we have a good landlord-tenant relationship. My tenant told me their AC stopped working and their furnace needs to be serviced. I'm a licensed HVAC technician and electrician, so almost all work on the house I handle myself but I refuse to do work unless they at the very least remove the dog for a period of time so that I can do the work, and they refused. I don't really like dogs. When I was very young, I lost part of my finger due to a dog bite. I was five, and later in my teens, I was attacked by a neighbor's GSD. I'm very uneasy around dogs and refuse to be around big dogs entirely. For context, my tenants have a husky. I have been hounded, pun intended, to get things fixed, but I won't budge about the dog situation. I refuse to go on the premises while the dog is there, even locked in a room. I also refuse to outhire the work because I can do it myself for next to nothing. Am I the asshole? And edit, just since it came up a bunch of times, I live in Ontario, where a landlord cannot legally forbid pets on rented property. They are not in breach of contract because it's not in our contract. As much as I want to tread carefully, and I think we should tread carefully and respect those with trauma, I do think the legalities of this situation leak into your moral obligation to your tenant here. They're living in Ontario, their AC stopped working, and their furnace needs to be serviced. I haven't lived or been to Ontario, but it is Canada, and Canada can get bloody cold. Maybe even bloody hot at different times, who knows? I feel like either you not going there and just servicing it, or getting someone to come out and service it. I don't know, that's morally weird that you're not going to do that for them. I mean, you're probably enjoying your own AC and furnace at your own place, but you're depriving them of that because you won't budge? That doesn't seem right to me, and I think you're the asshole for that. Now in the comments, Black Mamba number 5 says, You're the asshole. I don't have an issue with you not going over, your trauma is reasonable. But you're a landlord, and you're right. Tenants have rights. It is your responsibility to make the premises livable. I'm not sure where you're located, but if it's in the US, it's summer, and one of the hottest on record. They're paying you to live in a livable space. If you continue to take rent, you are required to fix it. Your excuse about not hiring an outside handy person simply because you can fix it is not reasonable. You clearly cannot fix it because you can't enter the home. Hire out, you're the asshole. Agreed. So strange to me that this person seems to have a gripe with the fact that tenants have protections. He can just hire a freaking contractor. Who cares about his fear of dogs? That only stops him from fixing it, not anybody else. He's using an excuse to get out of spending money on the property he can't be bothered keeping up to standard. I agree, and that's what majorly makes OP the asshole. However, what makes me furious is that OP seems upset that his tenants have protections. Lose a landlord. Disagree. Tenants knew before moving in that dogs would be a problem, but went ahead and created that problem. It is completely reasonable that the tenant remove the dog from the home when the work is taking place. Trying to work while the dog is perhaps barking and throwing himself against a door is untenable. And just contract to someone else? Well, this someone else may just as easily have a problem with a loose dog as well. Some handymen will not come if there's a dog on the premises. There are also lots of situations where dogs cannot be on the premises, like spraying for bed bugs and re-enameling bathtubs are two that come to mind. It may also not be financially viable in the long run for the landlord to contract out the work. That he can do the work himself is probably part of how he's making the landlord thing work. Landlord? Yes, I will rent to you but no dogs. Tenant? Okay. Also tenant? Gets a largish dog. Tenant says come fix stuff. 
Landlord replies, okay, but remove dog from premises while I do. Yeah, not gonna do that. Not the asshole OP. He lives in Ontario. No pet clauses in a lease are explicitly called out as illegal and non-enforceable under the Ontario Tenant Act. Also, any appliance present in the unit provided by the landlord is his responsibility to fix. The landlord could end up paying the tenant if he isn't careful. Rack1882 says, You're the asshole. If you aren't allowed to forbid the animal to be on the property, and you're renting out the property, you need to fix it or hire someone to do so. There is no requirement that you save money by not hiring out the work. So I think the better question is whether you want this to end up in court and have a judge decide who's right. How landlord friendly is Ontario? Do you want to find out? Look, Ontario is pretty tenant friendly, and the OP is 100% in violation of his duty as a landlord for refusing to service the furnace or arrange for it to be serviced. And if the AC is listed in the lease, not fixing that is a violation on OP's part. Anyway guys, I think that's where I'm going to end today's video. If you did like it, tell me what you thought about it down in the comments below, and make sure to just interact with everyone in this community. I love each and every one of you that I get to see on a daily basis. And don't forget, if you are a Patreon subscriber, I love you. You're on the screen right now with the YouTube members as well. If you see yourself, give yourself a pat on the back. You guys help me continue this YouTube journey. You keep me going. I see you guys everywhere. I see your messages, and thank you so much for for supporting me. I really love every single one of you. But with that all said, I'm going to be signing off now, guys. I hope you have a good day, night, sleep, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.